Caitlin. And welcome to our kitchen. Yes, welcome. So today we are talking something that I hear a lot from my patients. Oh. And honestly, I'm going to be honest with everyone. I experience this all the, you know, all, not all the time, but there are times. Are and times? it's that I don't feel like cooking, which I know is probably shocking to a lot of people, especially my clients who are like, Clara, that's definitely a lie. It's true. It happens. Not very often. Not very often. Do you feel like that sometimes? Well, we're just so extra in the kitchen. We, we are. can't help it. But we are very extra. There are times when we just can't, just don't feel like cooking. Yes. And so, we created a blog of what to cook when you don't feel like cooking. Because sometimes you just have to get get dinner on yes. the table. Get yeah. her done. So, these recipes do involve cooking. Mm -hmm. We haven't taken that piece of the equation totally out of it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but they're easy. They are. They're very easy. They're very easy. And if you enlist people to help, they become even easier. Even easier. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. So what are we making today? So we're going to start with our pizza. Yes. Homemade pizza. Okay. Um, and this is something that we do a lot in my house where we use naan yeah. as our pizza base. Yeah. Um, I like the little mini ones they're because so cute. Um, they're like individual pizzas. Yeah. Yeah. And I did get the ancient grain ones. Ooh. Fiber. Fiber. <laughs> um, but it makes it super easy. And you can keep these in the freezer and yep. just pull them out whenever you need them. Yep, absolutely. So, starting with naan, I'm going to, I'm going to give you the big pan. Ooh, okay. <laughs> we're right. going to build our pizzas. We don't need that water here. So, we're making quite a few today, as you can probably see. And that's because, one, our whole office likes pizzas. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is we want to show you how customizable this actually is. So, we work in a dietitian's office, but also we have co-workers and colleagues who have different dietary needs mm -hmm. so this is a really great meal that you can make for your whole family yes yeah, so whether you have food intolerances yep. or sensitivities or you have someone who just doesn't like certain foods or yep. difficult to please yeah everyone gets involved and you make your own absolutely so and that's the thing you know we're so we're using non today and we're using the ancient grains so yes higher fiber so if that is part of your um, nutrition care plan this is a good way to get it. Mm -hmm. We can certainly, there are gluten-free options available as mm -hmm. well. Um, there are, I really like to do this sometimes with tortillas and you can make almost mm -hmm. like a thin crust type mm -hmm. pizza or pita is another thing. English so, muffins. English muffins. So you can use a lot of different bases to have your pizza on a vessel, but they can meet your dietary needs if needed. For sure. Okay. Right. I'm going to be making, um, one specialty pizza that doesn't have cheese, because yes. we do have one person in the office who can't eat cheese, but... All right, Clara, what is yes. your favorite thing to make when you don't feel like cooking? When I don't feel like cooking? <sighs> okay, so, actually, I... We've talked about my obsession with kitchen appliances. Um, quite a concerning obsession, but... So I've really been loving my Instapot, and... I really like to make this. It's like a buffalo chicken chili, um, and usually I make it in the slow cooker. But even when, even the slow cooker takes that, you know, it's pretty easy to throw everything in. There's still that step of browning the meat and doing all this other things. So I started doing it in the Instapot, and it's done in like 20 minutes, okay. and it requires very little effort. And I'm a fan. Perfect. So that has become a new. You can ask my roommate how often we eat that because. <laughs> I need something quick. Mm -hmm. I, I do that. And now All it'll right. be in the Instapot this season. Cool. All right, what about you? Um, I would have to say breakfast for dinner is mm. my go-to mm -hmm. when I don't feel like cooking. Yeah. So we do a lot of eggs. Yeah. Okay. Uh, omelet. Yeah. Frittata. Mm -hmm. Fried eggs. Yeah. Whatever. I'll eat it. So one thing that I've really been liking too, and I usually will do this for lunch or I'll talk to my clients about it, are like the snack box style. Mm -hmm. And you know, pulling a protein and picking a starch and a fruit and a veggie and a fat. And you know, it doesn't necessarily sound an entree, but it gets it done. And it's a great way also, I think, to use up what you have for sure, leftover wise. Um, we were just talking about how our generation really likes charcuterie and mm -hmm. they think it's because we grew up loving Lunchables. Yeah. Which like, you know, easy yeah. peasy. And I think the big thing, the big takeaway is meals don't have to be complicated. No. Meals can not. be toast and eggs for dinner. Yeah. There's no rule that says you have to eat that for breakfast. Yeah. You know. And I think, you know, really looking, we're definitely not saying we, you can't 
order out occasionally, right? But we want to look at what does occasionally mean and, you know, how often do you not feel like cooking? And if more so that be, that is a pattern, what are some easy things that you can do in the kitchen to, to pull it together? Would you like any mushrooms in here? Maybe I would. Maybe with mushrooms too without? Yeah, let's throw out. I love mushrooms. I love onions. And my husband does not. So yeah, so this is a great this way that you can get both <laughs> the best of both worlds. Exactly. So favorite pizza topping. I don't think we've talked about this on here. Mm, I'm a huge fan of the. Um, I like greens on my mm -hmm. pizza. So I love to take it out of the oven and stick like a huge heaping pile of arugula on top. That's my favorite too. You stole it. Mm, sorry. But see, mine is prosciutto and arugula. It's like that good combination. All right, so I have some, threw some pepperoni on there. And again, this is a great way to get the kids involved. You know, we definitely prepared some of the chopped veggies ahead of time, but if you're really short on time, the grocery store does this for you. So if you really don't feel like chopping onions or chopping oh, sure. mushrooms, you can just pull it from All the grocery right. store. I'm gonna stick these in the oven. I want them hot, I want them to cook fairly quick, because it's already cooked. We just right. want it to heat up and melt. Right, and that's one of the benefits of using like a naan or a English muffin or tortilla versus um, buying a pizza crust, like one of the raw pizza dough crusts, which you certainly of course could do and could make into smaller pizzas if you wanted, um, but you have to bake it for a little bit longer. So this is pretty quick. And this is also a great idea if it's Friday night and the kids have a sleepover going on and then you don't have to worry about feeding mm -hmm. kids. You can just put a bunch of toppings out and let them decide what they want to do. For sure. sure. Okay. Pizzas in the oven. Pizzas in the what oven. What are we doing now? So we talk a lot about our one of our favorite foods is tacos. So you know we have to come up with a way to make tacos happen sure. when we didn't feel like cooking. So this has been a very popular recipe with a lot of our clients. They are, I know, I don't even know. I came up with it myself. They love it. I think it was yeah. amazing and yeah. people love it. They love it. Um, so we're going to make some black bean tacos today. Benefits of this dish beyond the fact that it's going to take literally no time to put together is it is vegetarian. It is so you don't have to wait for meat to thaw or nope. anything like that. It's literally things that you're getting out of your cabinet yep. and your spice rack. Yep. And that is another benefit is most of the stuff except for the toppings you can keep on hand. Yeah. And so if you're really in a pinch, I call them having your backup meals. Like if you're mm -hmm. running low on time or you're, oh my gosh, I didn't get to go to the store. What's things that you can keep in the house to, to throw something together? For sure. So vegetarian, it is also a um, high in fiber, which we're talking a lot about mm -hmm. today. We really love that fiber. We love fiber. We love fiber. <laughs> um, so that is another benefit. And again, tacos are one of those meals that we can make work for a lot of different conditions. So yeah. this is um, gluten-free because we are using corn tortillas. So naturally it is gluten-free, which is great. You could make it dairy-free if you needed to. Yes, definitely. Now, so, what's your favorite tortilla to use? Ooh, tacos. Okay, I'm a flour tortilla fan. I'm gonna be honest. It's hot. I'm gonna be honest. Do you need a little oil in there? No, no. no. All right. I do need my spoon though. I will get you a spoon. Um, so yeah, I'm the flower, and I'm really okay. liking the little baby street, street taco yes, tortillas. Mission They're tortilla, so home. cute. I'm a fan. Um, That's our go-to. Was it is the it's street the street taco mm -hmm. tortillas? But I really I'm gonna drink this a little bit. So oh yeah, go ahead, Mike. Um, there's companies now that are making tortillas out of things like almond flour and yep. cassava mm -hmm. and yep. chickpea flour, and yep. it's a really cool option for people who can't necessarily have. Yep flour yep. or corn intolerances or things like that. Yep. So those are pretty cool. They are. There's some really good, really good options. And that's where I was actually, I work with clients with food sensitivities and I was looking at the um, Enjoy for Life, the rice flour tortillas. And that's okay. what we were, you know, she's been really, she's like, Clara, I'm missing pizza. And I was like, all right, we're gonna figure out how to do this. And that's what she's using to, to make pizzas. Can I have a um, paper towel? You absolutely can. Oh. Oh, tomato, man. Okay, so this starts with a can of black beans, and typically I would rinse them and drain them. Yep. Um, and a can of either tomatoes with chilies, um, like Rotel, mm -hmm. or just plain diced tomatoes. Yep. It's just up to you. And I put those together in a saucepan, and I drain the tomatoes just because this gets pretty saucy, mm -hmm. and you don't want your tacos just like 
You don't you want, know. You don't want your tortillas falling apart. Tortillas falling apart, or just dripping all over you. So you want to drain them, put them together, and then if there's a bunch of extra liquid like there is here, we're going to bring it to a simmer and cook it down. So I am just preparing some toppings. I just shredded some lettuce, and again, if you don't feel like doing it, they sell shredded lettuce and finely shredded lettuce that you can you can put on. Right. Um, so one thing I wanted to show everyone, because I believe we've talked about this before, is we've talked about avocado, and I always have the question, how do I tell if an avocado is ripe? So, Safeway this morning is putting stickers on their avocados, hey. so that, <laughs> that made life a little bit easier, but I also wanted to show you, if you don't know, if there's not a sticker, what to look for. So, you know, you can tell there's a little bit of give. It's definitely soft, but it's mm -hmm. not, you know, super mushy. And this is my favorite. So you see this little nubbin up here at little the top? Stem. Little stem. If you take this out, oop, there you go. Do you, you see that? It's to be green underneath. That bright green. That means that it is ripe. Did you pick one that's bright green underneath? Yeah. That's not bad. Because it's ripe, according to the sticker. <laughs> they weren't lying. <laughs> I triple checked. Um, so, okay. So, uh, into this, it's really totally up to you what mm -hmm. you add in. Okay. I will say some places that I, I grocery shop at Wegmans, and they have these little jars of chili or dobo mm -hmm. yep. sauce. Yep. So instead of buying those cans that have the chilies in them and you got to mince yeah. them yourselves, mm -hmm. yep. it's just a paste, essentially, that you can add a dollop in. Mm -hmm. I meant yep. to bring it in. I forgot it this morning. That's okay. Um, I'm going to add smoked paprika for that mm -hmm. smoky flavor. Yep, so adobo, chilies will give you the smoke yep. flavor, but we can use smoked paprika instead. To get something similar. Yeah. And that's why another reason I like tacos is we've talked about how I like things medium spicy. Mm -hmm. And Caitlin likes her mouth to be on fire. Yeah. And <laughs> this is a great way that you don't have to. If you mm -hmm. like your mouth on mm -hmm. fire, you don't have to give that up. Yeah. Okay, I'm adding... Garlic and onion. Mm -hmm. So this is not low FODMAP. Nope. But we do like to recommend body yep. products. If you yep. are low FODMAP, this mm -hmm. is taco seasoning yep. without the garlic and onion. Yep. But we are not low FODMAP, so yep. I did add it in. And beans, they will give you, you know, they're also not totally low FODMAP. But, mm -hmm. you know, while this is vegetarian and we don't have to wait for meat to cook, ground meat, ground mm -hmm. beef, chicken, turkey. You could add this to that. You could easily add that to that. Fodmap. And, you know, that cooks really, really fast. All right. So I added garlic, mm -hmm. onion, so smoked paprika, taco seasoning. All right. And so we're just going to let it simmer for a minute. I'm going to show everyone also how to cut open this avocado. So that's another question that I get. Um, so if you guys want to get in here, I will show you and I'll just show you right here. They won't slice my finger open. So it's pretty easy. You want to just cut it normally. And at one point you'll feel that there's a pit. So you can go around like this. All right. So it went all the way around and you twist it and oh, look how pretty that is. So pretty. now what we have to do is look at this pit. Like what am I doing with this? So you want to do this very carefully. But a trick is take your knife, take the avocado, and just hit it in, and then twist, and it's out. And then carefully pop that off. Carefully pop that off. Usually <laughs> what I'll do is, I don't know if this is right or not, but I'll use a uh, paper towel or a... Um, I usually, I don't know if it's right, but when it's on the pit, I take it from this direction and I pop it oh, off. Oh, that's a good thing, Just because I feel like yeah. it won't cut me. I don't know. So that is, and actually, if you're making guacamole, you can save the pits because that helps prevent browning. So that's another thing is either... One thing I'll... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. You. One thing I'll do is if I'm only using half the avocado, I leave the side of the pit, pit. in yep. mm -hmm. and I wrap it really tight. Yep. And then using some kind of acid. So I grabbed some lime so that we could, you know, give us a little bit of acidity. And again, this is something you can prepare the toppings ahead of time. You can get the kids involved. You can have them, you know, put the cheese in a bag. Yeah, and another you know. make your own meal. Mm -hmm. Totally customizable. Yeah. What are we doing with the avocado? So I dice. am, yep, I'm just going to dice it out. And so what I'm doing, I'm just slicing this right now. You'll see this. And then I'm going to go this way. And they also have fancy tools for this too. Fancy avocado tools. Mm -hmm. And normally I use a... Um, a silver, actually, let me grab a, a spoon. Coming up right. While she's Sorry. grabbing that, a, you don't want to look at the, the taco. Make sure you can see it's thickening up. So easy. 
Yeah. No, this took no time. No time at all. No time at all. Okay, so this is diced. You could also slice it. You could also do this whole and just scoop. And there it is. They all kind of came out. Awesome. Look shall we build some tacos? We shall build some tacos. Our pizza's doing okay. I want to make sure we don't burn or we're going to have some angry uh, co-workers in here. We don't have pizza for them. Mm. Yummy. It looks good. I think it's... I'm going to maybe switch them. All right. Let's see. Oh, yes. We're going to build some tacos. Mm -hmm. Yummy. What I would do is wrap my tortillas up in some aluminum foil and stick them okay. in my toaster oven, yep. or wrap them in some paper towels, yep. stick them in the microwave, or in a dry pan, just get it heated up a yep. little bit um, over like medium heat. Mm -hmm. Because especially flour tortillas, is they're just not quite as pliable. They tend to break apart really, really easily. Corn. Yes. Corn tortillas. Yep. They tend to break apart really easily. Yep. So that little that heat kind of helps it out. Okay. This smells really good. It does. And we didn't get, um, we just grabbed some cheese and some lettuce and like I said, avocado and lime for topping. You could do whatever you wanted. You could throw some sour cream or Greek yogurt on there. You can make guacamole. You can, you know, put more salsa on there if you want to. Buy guacamole. Buy guacamole. The sky is the limit with tacos. Okay. That's why it's the best food out there. Okay. Would you like cheese? Yes. Okay. I want everything. Okay. I'm going to make this in every kind of taco. Actually, I think I do too. There we go. Like that. Let's throw some of this little avocado on there. And then, get some lettuce. Lettuce. Let us talk about this. Okay. All right. Ziggy's and here. Ziggy's here. here. And we're going to, I'm going to line this up for you. Line it up. Because I was assuming that's what you wanted, and hopefully it is. Okay. And we're good. All right. Do you know the correct way to eat a taco? Is there a wrong way to eat a taco? Um, I don't know. I learned on the cooking channel that there is a correct way to eat oh, a taco. Oh, really? What is the correct yes. way? I'm learning something. So I'm going to take my taco. Okay. I will watch you. Monkey see, monkey do. And I'm going to hold it parallel to the floor. Okay. And I'm going to bow to the taco. Oh, bow to the taco. <laughs> Oh man. Okay. Mine's falling apart. Mm, mm, ah! mm. Mm. That's good. Messy. Mm -hmm. Wait, when you use the flour tortilla. Yep. <laughs> mm, but that is excellent. Um, or you can double up on the corn tortilla. I saw something on social media that said it's okay to fall apart. Sometimes tacos fall apart and we still love them. Yes, we do love them. We do love them. So. Um, but that's yummy. That's very yummy. I really like that fresh lime on the mm -hmm. onion. That is that's a good, delicious. Good, uh, good touch. Yes. Okay. All right. Are we Pizza ready? Pizza time. Pizza time. I'm trying to think about my other favorite things that I like to make when I don't mm -hmm. feel like cooking. What about things with rotisserie chicken? Ooh. Okay. So I'm a huge chicken salad fan. I'm gonna be honest. Love chicken salad. I've also been a huge fan of making a chicken wrap and just like ripping apart the, um, you know, shredding the chicken and then throwing it with buffalo sauce if that's what mm. I'm feeling or you know. Really anything to that, definitely to that nature. What about you? What do you like to make with? Um, let's see. Recently, I remade our honey raisin chicken salad. Yeah, mm -hmm. I thought that was really delicious. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's honey and raisins and Greek yogurt, and I think that's it. Mm, okay. And the chicken, mm -hmm. so yummy. All right, you guys want to get in there? You can kind of see. Which one should we try? I'm thinking the pepperoni and mushrooms. I'm I'm all about that. All right, so here's what we're gonna just grab this little guy and stick on oop, right there. Let's cut this in half, and we're gonna cut this in quarters so we don't burn our mouse, which it might is happen. It's gonna be quite hot. Which might happen anyway. Now, I'm gonna finish mine off with some red pepper. Of course you are. Obviously. Of course you are. It's Caitlin, actually the red pepper flakes are good on pizza. I can't even argue with you there. All right, this is totally gonna burn our mouth. It is but absolutely. Just, it's a sacrifice we're going to make for pizza. That's what happens with pizza. All right. Mm. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Pizza. Mm. 
Like, you can't even go wrong with that. Honestly, oh, no. that was faster than ordering delivery. Yes, way faster. Way faster. Just throwing it out there. I'm a fan. All right, so another success. Another success. I mean, we just made two meals in, what's our time? We are, you know, maybe like 20 minutes. 20 minutes, we yeah. need two meals, so yeah. 10 minutes per meal. Yeah, so Good honestly, go. you're ready to go. So recipes are going to be on Facebook in the comments section. Yes. They're also up on the blog that went up on Monday. Yep. So if you go to our website, go to Nutrition Tips and blog. It'll be right there. Yep. And then we will be back on, it is November 19th, and we are talking diabetes friendly holiday foods because we're coming into the holiday season. So coming in hot. We are, we're ready to talk about it because it's definitely coming faster than we anticipated. Okay. I'm going to keep eating my pizza. Okay. And y'all have a good day. Y'all have a good rest of your day. <laughs> Bye.